two years ago I was at the priest retreat in our community. So we were over in the Czech Republic in a zone, an area called Budweiser, which is where the American family, the Budweiser, uh, <coughs> where they would have originated. Anyway, lovely forested area, absolutely beautiful. And uh, we were sitting down at one of the lunches. And one of the priests, one of the American priests, uh, was sitting beside me. We were talking. He said, look around. Because there are 60 of us priests in my community. The uh, work of Jesus, the high priest. And he said, look around. And he said, there, we are all completely different. We are all completely different. <coughs> you have the Swiss lads who will arrive 15 minutes early and they'll have the green pen, the red pen, and the blue pen parallel in front of them with their notes, with a ribbon placed at the exact place that they have left off. You have the Italians who arrive 15 minutes late with a coffee in their hands going, hey, oh, sorry. <laughs> you have, you know, then you have the African, there's a couple of African lads, just really big laughs. Oh, legs slapping and the whole lot. And uh, then there's the Irish perfectly balanced in every way. And, uh, <laughs> and the Americans with the hay. Uh, so, so it's just like you're all just sort of, and then like even within a nation, you know, we've got a lot of Slovaks in our community, but then even within that group, like there's some very academic lads, some very athletic lads, some, do you know, all, so even within a nation, we're not, it's not like we're all the same. So look, every single individual there was completely different. And I can imagine that's, it's, it, that it's that way in, in, in every community or in every grouping of people. We see it here in Holy Family as well. Like everyone is different. Because we can at, at times maybe look at the lives of the saints and say, mm, I should be like Mother Teresa, or I should be like Padre Pio, or, or I should be like whoever, Louis Marie de Montfort. And while definitely the, 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 the saints are, are a wonderful example of lived virtue, you know, of, of the faith put into practice, into real life, as opposed to just theory, uh, none of us are called to be another Mother Teresa or another Louis Marie de Montfort or another Maximilian Kolbe. I remember an American speaker a couple of years ago saying, uh, in the future we're going to see statues, right, of saints wearing jeans and maybe an Adidas hoodie, right? Because, like, hopefully as time goes on, the young people of today or the people of today will be the saints of tomorrow. So they'll be dressed in normal clothes of today. Now, this American speaker who happened to be Mark Hart he said, well, yeah, you'll have an Xbox controller in, in one hand. I don't think he will, any of the saints now. But, 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 but I think this, this will be the case. Like, and we think of maybe a Carlo Acutis or that, God willing now, when, uh, he's, if he, when he's canonized to help a God. I don't know what, what his statues will have him wearing, but more than likely jeans or a tracksuit or something. See, because... Sanctity isn't just for people of yesteryear or people of a certain age. Sanctity is, it's your calling, it's my calling, and it's for now. So we're, we're supposed to be different, we are different. And I think God loves variety. God loves variety. I mean, you think he doesn't even have one kind of angel that does, like, as far as we know, anyway, nine choirs of angels up there. Not just one, doing whatever angels need to do, but he's got lots of different kinds of angels. And in heaven, it's going to be multicolored. It's going to be like lots of different kinds of people uh, with lots of who, who excel in different kinds of virtue. We're all different. And if we don't think that God likes variety, look at the number of bugs that he has created. And uh, why? You know, who, who needs that many bugs? That so, many, so many kinds of bugs. But there you go. He likes variety. He likes variety. So he, doesn't, he hasn't created us to be kind of clones of a certain kind of, you know, boom, boom kind of approach to sanctity. It's, it's, it's you in your life, in your reality, with your strengths, in your weaknesses, in your virtues, in your vices, striving to be a saint. And, and allowing, allowing God's grace and your collaboration, your collaboration with that grace, to sanctify you. God's grace on its own is always sufficient, but if I put up resistance, then that sanctity is this is not going to be realized, you know? Then my effort on its own without God's grace, that's Pelagianism, right? We don't save ourselves without, without, without God's grace. We can't do anything. But it's always God's grace with our effort. We have to collaborate with it. Uh, and then you and I, you and I, can become saints. Can become the saints that, that the world needs. Can become the saints of today. One last little point. We spoke yesterday about the spiritual battle that's raging around us. 
For it is not against human enemies that we have to struggle, but against the sovereignties and the powers who originate the darkness of this world, the spiritual army of evil in the heavens. So that in, in our battle, our battle for faith and our pro-life battle, our, our pro-Catholic uh, battle, our pro-religious freedom battle, all of these various battles raging around us that fundamentally our enemy is, is, is the dark side, is, is, is Satan and, and the demons who aren't responsible, we'll say, for all the evil in the world, but they do encourage it, they do tempt it. We still, we still make the choice whether we sin or not, but they encourage that, that kind of that kind of lawlessness or that kind of rebellion against God's plan. Okay, so very providentially and interestingly, I heard a little talk last night which I found uh, helpful. Uh, it was given by an exorcist priest and he said, if God is so good, why not just make the, make the demons disappear? Why not just get rid of all these tempters? And he said, which I thought was, was very interesting, that because of a demon's temptation, right? Because they're tempting us to do evil, if and when I overcome that, I attain a greater virtue than if I'd never been tempted. So in the end of things, even the demons in their to their temptation end up serving God. Because it, it, they make they make our, our, our attainment our attaining of virtue harder. So the more I have to push on through my effort and God's grace, remember always those two, my effort and God's grace, God's grace and my collaboration, the greater the saint I can become. If I've never been tempted to, we'll say, impurity, never been tempted to impurity, and then I'm pure, well, uh, the grand uh, fair play though. What did you really do? You know what I mean? You didn't have to overcome anything. Whereas if you're tempted to impurity and you overcome it, and there's this barrage of, of, of temptations, but you say, no, Lord, I choose you, you know, I reject this, then that, that's a greater virtue. It's a greater level of sanctity because, because it's harder, because it, it required more of you. It required more of him. So we shouldn't think that, that in God's divine mind, there isn't a reason for the things that he permits. We don't always see it now. Of course not. We don't always understand God's mind now. But in the end, I think we will see how even those temptations, even the, the demons in their presence, even that struggle that we have to daily undergo to overcome whatever our vices are, that this can lead to a greater sanctity. So then this variety of people that we have in front of us and the myriad of Catholics that there are and all of their pros and cons and vices and virtues, <coughs> that we can one day with the help of God adorn heaven like different jewels on the Queen's crown jewels all different, all unique, and all beautiful. So we don't have to be like someone else. You just have to be the best version of yourself, the holiest version of you. And that begins today. So we ask the good Lord to guide us through our decisions and choices of today, that we may choose what is good, what is holy, what is true, what builds up his kingdom. Amen.